2020, the fall of Islamic states and the rise of a new political order, Iran, Israel, Armenia Union. Whether you interpret 2020 as a year of 2020 or eyesight of 2020, both could be right. Hello, I am Sorab Chamanara, the author of this book, and I would like to talk to you for a few minutes about it. It is necessary to have a brief knowledge of Middle East history to understand the reasons behind the conflicts, wars, terrorism, and now ISIS. A few years ago, I wrote a 90-page book, Perplexity of Iran, describing the conflicts in the Middle East as a proxy war between two ideologies, Wahhabism in Saudi Arabia and Shiism in Iran and I suggested an analogical formula for that, similar to Einstein's famous formula, E is equal MC2. Here, conflicts in the Middle East is equal to Iranian Shiism multiplied by Saudi Arabia Wahhabism to the power of two. Wahhabism or Salafism is the original Islam, and it remains constant. Shiism, historically, is an invented sect of Islam by Iranians to counter the traditional religion of Islam, and its variation depends on the power of the government in Iran to control that. Therefore, the only solution to resolve the conflicts in the Middle East is to minimize the influence of Shiism in the region. It should be understood that 90% of Islamic words are Sunni, meaning traditional Islam, and they are not part of this equation. It was with this mindset in mind that the book 2020, The Fall of Islamic States, was written. The book starts as early as 3,000 years ago, where Iranian history included Jews and Armenians. For 1,500 years, their common history was intertwined with not only good relations, but many love stories as well. The unification of Eastern and Western Roman Empire by Constantine and the establishment of the Christian government in Rome had a natural consequence in the Persian Empire. It gave unlimited power to the Zoroastrian clergies in the government, and the two superpowers were engaged in a very long period of constant wars within their borders, ignoring the rise of Islamic State in Arabia in the 7th century. Finally, the two weakened empires were conquered by the Islamic State of Arabia. The book briefly introduces the Quran and how Islam expanded towards the East and how the Central Asian Mongol and Turks conquest began. When the small Turkic tribes expanded their power and dominated the entire Middle East as Ottoman Empire, the book moves into the 20th century. Those three old nations of the Middle East in the 20th century share the common tragic destiny. Each has been a victim of the genocide. By 1990, after a long period of genocide, Armenians are wiped out and exiled from Asia Minor, that's Anatolia. By 1990, after several years of confiscating all the foods in Iran by the Russian and the British armies and their blocking humanitarian food imports, 9 million Iranian perished. By 1944, 6 million Jews were killed by Nazi in concentration camps. These three genocides are the common denominator shared 
by Israel, Armenia, and Iran in the 20th century Middle East history. With the rise of modernity in the Middle East in the 1970s, the dragon of Islamic fanaticism stayed in hibernation. But the late Shah's silly dictatorship, which dominated Iran by closing down all the democratic institutions and the free press and encouraging the religious organizations only to counter the influence of communism, gave the Ayatollahs an excellent opportunity to organize their power resources in Iran. As the first Prime Minister of the Islamic State of Iran, Mehdi Bazargan, said in 1980, Shah was the leader of the revolution. In 1979, the dragon of Shia fanaticism was awakened in Iran and a new generation of Salafism started to germinate in Afghanistan, known as Taliban. In no time, little dragons were born, and the world for the last 30 years has seen the Middle East in turmoil with no end in sight. The world has seen the horrific pictures of genocides in the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria known as ISIS since 2014. However, the Iranian people witnessed the same action in 1979. Comparing a Pulitzer Prize winning picture of 1980 in Iran and any of the hundreds of pictures of ISIS in 2014 gives Ritter a good comparison of these two movements. In the last chapters of the book, the events of the world are projected into a fantasy future from now till 2020. British Prime Minister Tony Blair after his unsuccessful attempt to make peace between Israel and Palestinians said, there will be no solution to the conflicts of Afghanistan, Iraq, and Palestine until an Islamic regime is in power in Iran. Those final two chapters include a simple solution. To name a few thousand ayatollahs who rule Iran with their families and cronies who control the armed forces, security forces, prisons, financial institutions, and sanction them. On February 21, 2015, the spokesman of Iranian Islamic State, Mr. Nobach, said, 700 billion dollars of Iranian assets have been stolen in the past five years. The U.S.-backed sanction should apply to those who have deposited these assets in their foreign accounts rather than with the people of Iran. It is predicted by 2016 such a real sanction will apply, and no matter who the President of the United States will be, the countdown of the regime change will start. By 2016, liberal women will be the leaders of the U.S., Israel, and Armenia. They will accelerate the change in Iran. The power of women and young people in Iran and their efforts will force the leader to start negotiation with the opposition. Finally, by 2020, Iran will have a new secular democratic constitution and the government first order will be a treaty creating an economic union like the EU between the three nations of the Middle East. In the years after, other countries will join this union. 
it is appropriate that a very poetic song Imagine by John Lennon ends the book. However, it was initially written as a warning that this is not a dream, but a realistic wish. I hope someday you'll join us. Thank you.